Hello everyone, and thank you for joining this FA Connect session focused on our new clinical trial opening at Stanford Children's this fall, which is a novel strategy for alternative donor transplants in Fanconi anemia using TCR alpha beta T cell and CD19 B cell depleted grafts and a reduced intensity preparative conditioning regimen containing JSP191 that we believe may dramatically improve the treatment of this disease. My name is Agnieszka Czechowicz, and I'm an assistant professor at Stanford University, where I've been involved in developing our bone marrow failure program in antibody-based conditioning treatments, and I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Rajni Agarwal, who is the clinical PI of this trial and brings her decades of experience with FA, as well as her clinical expertise with this antibody treatment in severe combined immune deficiency patients, and my colleague, Dr. Alice Bertina, who is a co-investigator of this trial and brings her decade of experience with haploidentical transplantation and the use of TCR alpha beta T cell CD19 B cell depleted grafts to our team. Today, it is our pleasure to introduce this new and innovative trial to the FA community that we may believe may dramatically improve patient outcomes. This is a phase 1b 2a study that is open to patients in the US testing the use of TCR alpha beta T cell CD19 B cell depleted hematopoietic grafts in combination with JSP191, a humanized anti-CD117 monoclonal antibody. The sponsor of this trial is Dr. Maria Grazia Roncarolo, the director of the Stanford Center for Definitive and Curative Medicine. This trial was recently approved by the FDA and is now open with planned enrollment to start in October of this year. We anticipate treating up to 12 patients on this trial at our Lucille Packard Children's Hospital in Stanford, California. The trial that we're presenting today lies on the backdrop of decades of hard work in FA transplants done by many great transplant programs that have been made great strides in improving outcomes for patients with FA. While we very much appreciate the progress that has been made in the field to date and the great survival outcomes of FA transplants today, despite this, they unfortunately still have many short-term and long-term challenges associated with them. With the new treatment paradigm being tested in this trial, we believe we may be able to dramatically improve outcomes with allogeneic stem cell transplant for FA patients in multiple ways. Specifically, current treatments still require long hospitalizations and carry the high likelihood of severe infections, mucositis, organ damage, graft-versus-host disease, infertility, and secondary malignancies, which plague all FA patients, as is seen in this graph. We believe that with our new treatment regimen, which does not contain irradiation or busulfan, we can prevent these short-term and long-term complications and overall ease the stem cell transplant treatment process as well. So how do we plan to accomplish this? Well, we aim to do this using two complementary strategies that we believe will dramatically improve outcomes and turn allogeneic stem cell transplant into a much safer and easier procedure. Specifically, in this trial, we are striving to optimize the donor hematopoietic grafts by depleting them of TCR alpha beta T cells and CD19 B cells, which enables faster immune reconstitution while decreasing infections at graft versus host disease. And also by using conditioning with the anti CD117 antibody, JSP191, which we believe will eliminate the need for irradiation and busulfan thereby decreasing tissue damage, mucositis, infertility, and secondary malignancies. The graft manipulation strategy we are employing in this trial is not new, but is rather an evolution of prior graft manipulation strategies, and it has already been shown to be safe and effective in quite a number of settings, including in FA. This strategy is different from the more classic CD34 positive selection or T cell depletion strategies that in the past have been used and instead, this preserves the stem cells that enable the development of the new blood and immune system, as well as NK cells and gamma delta T cells that enable faster immune reconstitution without the alpha beta T cells and B cells that can cause graft versus host disease and lymphoproliferative disorders respectively. This strategy also expands the donor pool enormously by enabling the use of haploidentical donors, such as siblings or parents enabling almost everyone to be able to get a transplant and allowing for better quality and control of the graft as the donor collection and processing is now all done at our center locally 
decreasing anxiety over lack of available or reliable donors and ensuring the absolute best graft collection with a fresh graft that can be then infused directly into the patient without the need for graft transport. This strategy was first pioneered back in 2014 by Dr. Alice Bertina and her former colleagues, where they demonstrated for the first time that this new graft manipulation engineering strategy could be successfully performed in patients with various non-malignant diseases with excellent outcomes. In this seminal paper they published, they showed that they were able to cure children affected by life-threatening non-malignant disorders that otherwise did not have the option to get access to a transplant as they did not have suitable donors. Given this initial exciting report, they then expanded this approach to many more patients with various diverse non-malignant disorders and showed great outcomes with very low treatment-related mortality and a greater than 90% overall survival, despite using only haploidentical donors. 10 FA patients were included in this analysis. This approach was then expanded to many more FA patients, and outcomes of 24 FA patients treated in this manner were recently shared in this published study. The median age of stem cell transplant in these patients was 8.6 years, and sustained primary engraftment was achieved in 22 of the 24 patients, over 90%, with a median time to neutrophil recovery of only 12 days, and platelet recovery of only 10 days thus minimizing infection risk and hospitalization time. Only two graft failures and one case of poor graft function were considered as adverse events, and the two patients who experienced primary graft failure underwent a subsequent successful transplant from the other parent without issue. Thus, the overall survival of this approach was shown to be 100%. Importantly, despite using haploidentical donors, the cumulative incidence of grade 1 to grade 2 acute graft-versus-host disease and chronic graft-versus-host disease in the study was only 17% and 5.5% respectively. Out of the 24 patients, only 4 had acute graft-versus-host disease and only 1 had chronic graft-versus-host disease, which is similar to improved as compared to using matched unrelated donors. Importantly, these patients also had very low rates of infection showing significant benefit to this approach. We were very fortunate to recruit Dr. Bertina to Stanford Children's several years ago, and she has brought this important graph manipulation strategy with her and has continued to optimize it further. Since her recruitment in 2018, we've now transplanted over 50 patients with haploidentical transplant at Stanford Children's with this approach, with excellent outcomes for both malignant and non-malignant disorders using standard chemotherapy and our irradiation-based conditioning. However, we'd like to improve these outcomes further by eliminating the use of this classic genotoxic conditioning, which we believe we can do with antibody-based conditioning instead. And our trial NFA will be the first of its kind to combine these innovative new treatments to create what we predict will be the best transplant procedure. Antibody-based conditioning is a new conditioning approach that was pioneered here at Stanford by myself and other colleagues that was based upon the hypothesis that preparation of patients for transplantation could be achieved using improved and more targeted means. Specifically, based upon data that we obtained from mouse transplant experiments, we showed that transplanted stem cells compete with host stem cells. And rather than using toxic methods, such as total body radiation and alkylating chemotherapy, that are nonspecific and broadly wipe out the entire bone marrow and injure other tissues. We showed that effective transplants could instead be conducted using antibody-based conditioning that specifically targeted the host blood-forming bone marrow stem cells, sparing other tissues such as the gut, skin, liver, and reproductive organs. The way we have accomplished this to date is through blockade of the CD117 receptor on blood-forming bone marrow stem cells using the anti-CKIT antibody, JSP191. This antibody binds to these stem cells and blocks the binding of a growth factor called stem cell factor, otherwise known as SCF, that these stem cells need. And by doing so, it specifically causes targeted depletion of these cells from the bone marrow. 
This approach has been advanced by my Stanford colleagues into patients and has been tested as a single agent conditioning method in children and adults with severe combined immune deficiency over the last several years in a clinical trial here at Stanford, led by my colleague, Dr. Rajni Agarwal. Specifically, in a dose escalation study with increasing doses of the anti-CD117 monoclonal antibody given prior to transplantation of donor stem cells, we have treated 13 patients to date with six patients that have had longer-term follow-up to report. Excitingly, this antibody in this setting has been found to be extremely well tolerated with no reported toxicity whatsoever in patients, and this treatment is now being done outpatient. Importantly, JSP191 has also been found to be biologically active in this study with newly noted donor chimerism post-allogeneic stem cell transplant. Specifically, single-dose administration was shown to deplete host stem cells and enable engraftment of donor stem cells, which then led to an increase in naive T-cells in the engrafted patients and the cure of their immunodeficiency disease. Given these promising results in patients with severe combined immune deficiency, we have been excited to get this treatment to FA patients who need it even more and to use it to replace the total body radiation and busulfan chemotherapy, which is used in most FA transplant regimens. In this trial we have developed, we plan to give a single dose of the same JSP191 antibody intravenously over one hour at one fixed dose level of 0.6 milligrams per kilo, 12 days before the transplant, and combine it with standard immune suppression containing ATG, fludarabine, lodocyclophosphamide, and rituximab to prevent immune rejection of the donor cells. Concurrently, to the patient receiving this conditioning regimen, the best available donor will be prepared using standard GCSF and fluoroxifor treatment to mobilize their stem cells into the peripheral blood, and these will be collected from their vein through apheresis for the patient. The graft manipulation process will then be performed outside the body to eliminate the problematic TCR alpha beta T cells and the CD19 B cells, and the remaining cells will be infused into the patient by a central venous catheter. Together, we believe these two components will enable us to safely and effectively treat FA patients and improve procedure outcomes dramatically. To be eligible for this trial, patients must have Fanconi anemia and be in or nearing bone marrow failure without an available matched sibling donor. Specifically, patients must be greater than two years of age, have abnormal chromosomal breakage studies, and identified FANC gene mutations, be in bone marrow failure as defined by having blood counts with either a platelets less than 100,000 per microliter, hemoglobin of less than 9 grams per deciliter, and or an absolute neutrophil count of less than 1,000 cells per microliter. Additionally, patients must have a consenting 5 out of 10 or greater HLA matched related or unrelated donor available to travel here for apheresis, and patients cannot have myelodysplastic syndrome or malignancy, cannot have mosaicism with increasing blood counts, or have an available HLA identical sibling that otherwise would be willing to donate for them. Given the positive clinical results of each of these components of treatment in other settings, we expect this trial to have excellent outcomes for Fanconi anemia patients with decreased toxicity, and we look forward to speaking with those interested at the FA Connect session discussion to follow. In the interim, to learn more or to participate, please contact the trial PI, Dr. Rajni Agarwal, or myself, Dr. Agnieszka Chekowicz. We'd also be thrilled to tell you more about our institution, Stanford Children's, and our comprehensive and exceptional bone marrow failure program. We appreciate the support of our institution, the FARF organization, and the philanthropic donors that have made this trial possible. Thank you so much for the opportunity to tell you more today.